Hi, it's, is this Nick? Hi, Nick. Yeah, it's Nick. Hi, uh, Demon Mama. Nice to talk to you. Hey. Right, I'm just gonna jump out right now. You uh, guys have a good debate. Thank you very much. What are your pronouns, Nick? Um, I, I mean, I'm cis, so okay. it doesn't matter. So, do you do you want me to just put any all, or you do you use she, her, he, him? Uh, he, him. That's fine. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. I believe your your pronouns are she, her. That's correct. Yep. And if I call you ma'am, you won't be pissed. No, I, I won't. I mean, although. <laughs> okay. You know, no, I won't. I won't be pissed. All right. So what's up? What's up, Nick? What do we? What do you got um, for me tonight? I heard you had some I mean, some discussion topics. Well, d discussion topics in in a way that okay. First of all, I want to get out of the way that your book is mirrored, and that might be a dumb meme, but uh, my book is mirrored. Stream, I've been, yeah, the book behind you. That's or I don't know if it's a book or a poster or something behind you. It's oh yeah, mirrored. it is. It's a protest sign, and it says "Unionize Amazon, Tax Bezos." Oh, okay, that's awesome. Yeah, it was from I, when I, I went to a picket uh, in the before times. Ah, I got yeah. you. I got you. Little bit, um, of, Just a little bit of shameless virtue signaling, that's all, you know. It's okay. Everyone's got a little bit of virtue signal in them. Yeah, a little history, do. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I just specifically, I wanted to talk about uh, human-centered capitalism. Okay. And I know I know that um, you're not a big proponent of capitalism at all. I am and not. I know a lot of left, leftists are not as well. Um, I, I, I like, I seem to find myself agreeing with, uh, like Marxist historical, uh, material, like, ma like, like materialism and like all, all the stuff that like lefties talk about, mm -hmm. but, um, I'm, I'm in a super rural uh, area and community and I do talk to a lot of the people I'm with. I do have a lot of conversations, but like, it's so hard to talk to anyone and like have any kind of progressive change. Uh, trying to talk about like anything having to do with socialism or like progressivism or, or anything uh so i i i kind of i was i'm i was born and raised conservative and i okay. live in conservative areas and stuff so yeah. like um i've been like i've been always interested in politics and when andrew yang came up i, I always i i liked that it, it was capitalism but like uh, centered around humans and I started reading a lot into like socialism and mm -hmm. communism and, and actually Marx itself himself a little bit um, and I just can you can you maybe explain to me like maybe why I shouldn't be a human-centered capitalist if I if I do find myself agreeing with Marx or yeah I mean I think there's a pretty uh, I think actually this is a kind of s simple argument for me which is that um, capitalism Okay, so when we're talking about societal issues, um, societal issues are largely caused by systems. Uh, it's very, you know, it's very hard to look at one random person and say, okay, can I extrapolate out this single person's experience in life into, you know, making sense of an entire country of people with highly diverse existences? No, you might be able to f pick up some like commonalities, like, you know, certain things. You might be able to find some, you know, uh, advice that you could give that individual, but it's very hard to understand a system without analyzing the system as a whole. And um, when you start to analyze a system as a whole, you realize that there are mechanics of societal systems. There are mechanics of economies. And capitalism uh, is a system that by its nature, by its structure, does not center humans. And so it's very hard in my mind to come up with a capitalism that actually centers humans because you can tell you can call it that you can say that it'll do that but the mechanics of how ca capitalism actually operates just never will it's like um i don't know it's like trying to drive your car in the water you know what i mean the car is designed to do a certain thing and then when you hit it, when you get it in the water all of a sudden it's not able to do that thing um and likewise capitalism is designed to do a very specific thing um and it doesn't you can't force it to do that other thing because it's not designed for that um and i guess like when when you sort of s s you know step back from all of the intense political argument whatever i just think that socialism and eventually communism hopefully anarchistic communism is a much much better system just in just about every single way for what we're actually trying to accomplish um like i guess for some people who really want to live in like a like an age of like robber barons 
bonds and oil people like capitalism works really great for that and it does capitalism does do certain things very very well it's just that it's not going to do the things you know it's not going to do uh, human centric things very frequently or when it does it's going to be with a very very specific um bent to it like for example you know you might get some uh, billionaires who do lots of nice things in the same way that you might get a king that does lots of nice things um there's a statement that like conservatives like to do a lot which is the um, and i heard this all the time growing up you've probably heard this before but people say that like the best the best type of government is a uh, perfectly ben benevolent dictator or something like that. But it's like, but you never get those. You all, you know, because when that guy dies, his son takes over and his son might be a jack off. You've probably heard some, you know, Republican or conservative relative say something like that. Um, actually, I, I find most conservative and, and I um, and I from what I remember from from your background, I, I believe you grew up Mormon, right? Pretty. Like, no, pretty I, I grew Mormon. up uh, evangelical Christian. Yeah. Uh, oh, Protestant, oh. Protestant. Yeah. Oh, Protestant. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, really? Yeah. I oh, interesting. I thought. Never mind. But yeah. still, I grew up. Uh, e oh, really? I grew up evangelical. As, oh, sorry, I'm not going to shift it too far. But no, it's good. Uh, I I grew up evangelical as uh, as well. And I'm finding now that a lot uh, Baptist, to be specific, like fundamental independent Baptists, like <laughs> like they hate the trans, they hate the gays. They're that like it's pretty. Um, even though I still call myself somewhat conservative, but not I'm out outwardly progressive. Anyhow. Um, I, I find that these people do not um, don't really like government at all. Their favorite kind of government is actually no government because they say that, like, but they say that and then they go ham on on people like Donald Trump and then they fly Blue Lives Matter flags. And it's really funny to me because it's like um, like. Like, again, I mean, this is like my whole family has always been like super, super. They love the military. They love the police. And it's like, wait, but that is government. The police and the military are government. So they say, oh, yeah, I'm kind of a small government person, except for, you know, we should fund the police a ton and we should fund the military a ton. It's just an aesthetic. You know, there's no actual substance to that claim in my experience a lot of time. I don't think they really hate the government. They say they do, but they just hate the government when it does stuff they don't like. And like, I mean, maybe maybe it's a difference in in like who we grew up around but i find it very i it's very rare for me to find actual small government people um like uh, the ones who usually are like they kind of tend to self-isolate they tend to kind of go like buy a farm in the middle of nowhere and then actually become independent and those are the real small government people most of the other people are just like no i don't like I, when they say small government they mean i don't want to give welfare to black people and they don't and but they're perfectly fine like dumping millions of dollars into the into the police or keeping up the um you know keeping up the military industrial complex I, um i i have a question though sure. about that right so mm -hmm. I, I live in a very red state, mm -hmm. uh, like very probably the reddest state. Uh, sure. Mike Pence is crashing on a uh, on a couch here right now. Oh, like um, wait, like Illinois or or like Indiana? Indiana. Oh, Indiana. Okay, yeah. Um, and I I, I feel like what I, like so I guess I, I really called you because I wanted to talk like how can I how can I I, I call myself progressive. I want uh -huh. progress to happen in this in my rural community. Yeah. But I I don't know how to like. There's no real way to talk to these people because at the end of the day what it comes down to is they don't like government at all like they okay. don't care for the government uh well okay so there is a or couple... they start talking about like socialism because like my my yeah well i grew up in a post-soviet household or whatever yeah yeah that's that's a lot of americans <laughs> yeah so yeah a lot of people have huge problems with that um but uh I mean, okay, so it's really hard. So, like, um, when it comes to – we're kind of talking, talking about a couple of different topics here. When you're talking about, like, reaching people in um, rural America, it can be pretty tough, honestly. And I say this spend, having spent most of my life living in rural areas. It can be really, really tough um, because, of course, a lot of people are constantly reinforced by their social um, environment. Um, like, you know, <laughs> they might um, – be going to church every week where they're getting a dose of of bias confirming religious messaging or whatever there's a lot of that that happens a lot um i tend to think that in rural areas one of the best ways to like make positive change is to empower the people who already exist there who are already like biased towards progressivism so for example 
a lot of or any type of progress like like yeah. whatever the bent of progress uh, oh oh yeah because that's uh, okay so in, in my mind it's like out here like we're making trade-offs right we're not talking about trans rights we're not talking about gay rights we're not really even talking about abortion we're just trying to get like democratic workplaces established or, yeah, or, that or could something be a thing. to that effect right? but i mean you know also I mean? but i mean also there is room for other types of like social progressivism like for example um like a, a great example is like uh in in a lot of states there have been like very very small charities that have sprung up and managed to find a huge like a, a big political and advocacy presence by pure passion so like say you have a small state and you're the only like pro-trans advocacy group around or pro-gay advocacy group around well guess what every single gay person and every single trans person in the state is going to find you and they're going to be willing like a lot of them are going to be willing to fight with you as long as you treat them well and you're actually doing what you say you do um so is it but is it possible to detach like i i i guess i know the answer but is it possible to detach like like ever like lgbtq like issues from like all types of other issues because i i just know that that these these people will never be okay with like you know they're it's almost like trying to talk to like a single issue voter in a way yeah. you know what i mean like they're always and i just like they're all like um so someone like a single issue voter like only votes against abortion but like yeah um, they might only vote uh, like, or, or then it'll be abortion or it'll be gay people or it'll be like the education system being okay with gay people, you know? And yeah. Um, I think it, I think that it should be done, uh, at your own peril, so to say, because, um, and and i think there's a lot of historical examples of this i think first of all humans are really bad at like gauging numbers um it might seem like trans people are really really small like a, a percentage of the population um but if that percentage of the population is united in its goal a lot of changes can happen and and like three percent or five percent of a population in a state is actually pretty huge especially if you're going to be appealing directly to them but but uh uh so that's that's a risk i i think that like i think what you're you're sort of talking about sort of like a class reductionist approach it sounds like a little bit um and those things are really they can be really dangerous because um and, and I don't believe that, like, it's a wise choice to do so. But there might be times where you have no other choice, and it could but be. If I do it yeah. in a way that's not – that's uh, I'm sorry. If I do it sure. in a way, like – um be, like this like um in a way that's like positive populism right mm -hmm. or I, i'm not talking i don't have to be talking about bashing the gays or right right you well, know I hope not you, you know, well <laughs> yeah uh oh man i i won't i would never yeah. i yeah. i have come full circle compared to so many people uh i grew up with and knew yeah um and talked to uh, even though i'm still learning honestly i feel like a lot of people who are conservative are still learning uh, a lot of uh, oh for sure yeah a, a lot of the everything uh that goes on um, yeah i mean it's it's difficult it is really hard and like uh i think there there are some things that like i don't know if there's an easy answer um i do think that it's like uh okay so there's there's uh, this sort of thing is a double-edged sword so when and let me explain this like from the perspective of somebody who belongs to one of those minor minority groups and grew up in a really really rural area and a really super christian area um like if if uh you're you're gonna need allies no matter what you're not gonna um like you're not gonna be able to to like uh do this shit alone and the thing is like for people who are trying for for people who belong to minority groups whether it's gender or sexual or or, or skin color or race whatever whatever you want to talk about um like they're in, in rural areas they're often in survival mode and they're going to be looking for organizations that they can trust or not trust and a lot of them are not going to trust organizations that aren't even willing to like say like hey we believe in this um and we believe that you're like really i don't, see i i really find like i really find that like that's like people really falling for like the oldest trick in the capitalist book is that when corporations or like when organizations like put these kinds of show of like, oh, you know, they put their flag out for the right days and whatnot. I feel like people just buy that hook, line and sinker. Well, real I, quick I, question. I, are you are you gay? Uh, no. OK. Are you black? No. OK. And you're cis. I, you said at the beginning. Right? Yes. OK. So I don't know if you ever know what it feels like to go to a place 
um, and for the first time in your life to see uh, like a nurse wearing a uh, a we're wearing a pin that has a uh, like a rainbow flag that says you are valid and just knowing like this weight off your shoulder that oh my god thank god i don't have to think about whether this person is going to be discriminating against me be based on my sexuality or uh i don't have to hide my language i don't have to lie about whether i'm straight or gay this is a huge deal like then i know that it is possible for corporations to co-opt this you know and just plaster uh, a pride flag on stuff but i don't i think it's very hard for people who've never been in that position to have have done that like i remember the first time i ever came to this state like I live in in Washington, and the first time I ever went to Capitol Hill, the like the like tr historically gay neighborhood, and I saw rainbows painted on the streets. Every single store in that neighborhood has a sign on it that says, "We do not tolerate bigots. You are welcome here, regardless of your sex, your sexual orientation, your skin color, and your religion." Every single store has has a sign like that, and it is an unbelievable feeling of safety and relief to see that. So while yes, maybe some of those stores are shitty, the fact of the matter is that they have together for all of their other flaws and all of their you know they're still capitalists, their stores and stuff. Um, for all of their other flaws, they have made it clear that 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 is not socially acceptable anymore, and it's incredibly incredibly safe. It's incredibly nice. Uh, not just nice, but it's incredibly uh, uh, powerful. And people remember that. People who've been treated bad by the system on on the basis of, of who they are will not forget that. And, and yeah, I do think it's possible for it to be maliciously used. But it's also um, just a simple fact of reality. And I could say this as somebody who's tried to survive. Uh, when I'm looking through the phone book... Um, and and I see a doctor that lists that they're LGBT friendly, I'm gonna fucking call that doctor first because I don't wanna deal with a risk gambling on somebody who isn't willing to say they're LGBT friendly. Yeah, maybe they might still be a piece of shit, but if they're not willing to say that, then why the fuck would I even try? And um, the fact of the matter is, again, like, unless you really don't care about those marginalized people, you need those marginalized people. Uh, like, marginalized people make up a huge amount of the people that we're, you know, trying to help. Even if each individual minority isn't the majority of the country, there is still a huge amount of people. And, you, like, for example, unions in America were, def were largely, many of them were defeated by capitalists exploiting the fact that they were very racist. And they wouldn't allow black people or or Asian people into their membership, and that meant that they were not they didn't have solidarity. They couldn't get the whole workplace on their side, and that you need that to be able to to be able to fight. I very much believe in an intersectional leftism. I don't think that leftism is leftism unless it's intersectional, because you cannot build solidarity with people who will ultimately turn around and kill you because or or not even kill you, but restrict your rights. Some of them will kill you because of who you are. You can't like, wait. But yeah. do you think that it's a do you really think it's a, a majority of conservative Christians that you grew up that with that would kill you? Um, because these are people, you know, I'm not going to talk to you about people you don't know. You know what I like? You know what I mean? Um, and sorry, if that's like, personal, would they kill me with my can... own with their own hands? No. Would they let me die? Yes. Fuck yes. Almost all of them have and will. Um, the number of people in my family who just literally said nothing and even helped my my like uh, my dad when he disowned me from the family and all of them in solidarity with him just stopped talking because they didn't because you know it was easier to just yeah. let the weirdo queer disappear out of the family than it was to cause any waves with the the fucking asshole yeah that's the thing like silence silence can be violence and and it is true like most of my family just wait but no. let me disappear okay yeah, yeah. Uh, i i get okay i guess yeah i i see i see what you mean yeah um i i understand what you say um yeah um, so it, it's a big problem because i think that like uh i think that while i don't think that like every conservative in america is like literally a racist um like personally and like would kill a black person on site um it is there are all kinds of varying degrees 
uh, of racism among like conservative circles in America. And it ranges from would would not say anything to would would join in. And it, it that is concerning because you don't really have that same problem on like the other side as much. There is still racism, there is still discrimination, but not even close to the same degree. Like most your average Democrat, it, it the reason why they're a Democrat is like for the average democrat that is is because right. they're really gro they're really actually personally grossed out by like racism and stuff and so they're like Ugh, like i don't want to be a part of that like they might even be conservative like fiscally but they're alienated by the fact that the republican party in america and the messaging of the conservative factions in america has become so far right wing that it, that it's disgusting and sickening you know like there's so many people who are alienated by american conservatism um and it's one of american conservatism's biggest weaknesses honestly um but but yeah um yeah you, um so, yeah. do you see David do you Mama see um oh, oh, okay sorry to, to shift the the conversation that's fine um uh do you see um maybe a splintering of like the conservatives like conservatism based on like church even like because i i just i feel like because I, I i went to church recently sure um for Sunday school and I had to walk out because it was literally like, uh, you know, the Democrats and their LGBTQ agenda yeah. and their snowflakes. And it was literally just buzz kind of saying buzzwords. Yeah. Um, and I, I, and I know that like, I know that some branches of Christianity will never be able to like merge or accept like progressive ideals and uh, like, like you, you know what i mean like there are just some sects of christianity like you know there's like the you, you know like there's the cool there's like kind of the cool center kind of more center christians do you think like they'll there will be like a like a big split down the middle from like i mean i don't know about on uh, religion like I, I, this is really complicated because like uh, like uh in my experience like religions tend to uh god it's really hard to say like okay so god right <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's really tough like i don't think it's going to be i don't think we're going to see a religious a a like standard religious schism right now i think that what we're likely to see in the republican party and in the conservative side of america is a split along the lines of like more or less the trump q cult and the the mm -hmm. establishment that appears to be what's happening and i don't know how that's going to play out um like uh yeah like i i uh I don't know. Yeah, Ver I know you can't Ver see the future. You don't have a crystal ball. But. Yeah, uh, Vermin brings up something here, which is something that I've shared. Uh, Vermin says, my my mom started going to online service because the priest kept, or stopped going to online service because the priest kept telling them to vote for Trump. She for real almost denounced Gosh. her lifelong Catholicism over it. So uh, here's another, and, and I have a, a similar experience, which is that, uh, believe it or not, a few years ago, I went to a Catholic mass on Christmas because I was like, you know what? I've never, ex like, I'm not Catholic. I've never experienced like a proper Catholic mass. And it was actually, yeah, a me yeah, it was actually a breathtaking experience until one of the Cardinals who was there, uh, went up and started talking about, uh, gay marriage perverting the way the the like natural way of god's intention and like there were a lot of people there for that christmas service and it was this was a christmas service so it's not supposed to be like a super political one it's supposed to be as welcoming as possible and they still went up there and started talking about that and it was like we left we literally just left and like again i was there as an atheist with the goal of like a cultural experience i was just like ah uh, you know what yeah Fuck just, just want normal kind of christmas right just yeah, like, a normal, like i, I just wanted to go the there baby, and give them the benefit of the doubt mother mary whatever yeah i wanted to give just them the benefit of the doubt christmas. And, and and enjoy yeah. their art and partake in their religious culture and they can't have a you little can. cracker hang yeah. Out. yeah i mean uh, i didn't do i you're not supposed to do uh you know you're not supposed to go up and do um what's it called the um sacrament or whatever the the i can't remember what it's called uh i can't i'm blanking uh I can't a Eucharist. You're not supposed to do Eucharist. Yeah, you're not supposed oh, to do Eucharist. the Eucharist. And they don't and... have that in the pews. No, no, no. My no, church no. had those like in, had our like cracker oh, in the no, pews. No, no. Catholics, during, uh... you Catholics, you go up and you get it. The priest has to put it in your mouth. Yeah, they they put it on yeah. your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's oh, yeah. yeah. It's qu quite rather. It's um, quite strange. But yeah. Anyway, the whole thing was I was like, um, you're not supposed to do it if you're not a Catholic or whatever. But like the thing is like 
it, it is really bad. So the fact of the matter is that I think that um, the religious right in America is indeed, uh, it's going through a transformation where all of the like non-Trump, non-QAnon people are slowly being pressured out of the spaces. Um, and, and that is concerning because I think it's leading to more religious extremism as they press out the lesser, like they force out the, the lesser, uh, extremists in their in their midst now it's possible that there might be some like you know chill churches and stuff that pop up but like those people those people are by their definition not the extremists so they're not likely to make a whole lot of noise about it now it's possible some people do crack the other way but no i think i think the church largely by and by and large just like they always have i think that the religious groups are going to be um seizing on the you know extremism on the further They'll always dog whistle to their base, yeah. kind of. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. keep in mind that churches have, for a long time, been, um, especially traditionally white uh, churches, have been the vehicles for propagating racism, for propagating anti-scientific thought, for propagating anti-psychology, all of these things, uh, yeah. because they're so, uh, because so many churches are so structured as, like, you know, like, powerful culty like like uh, like they, they're able to disseminate information in a, in a very specific way where it's also endorsed by god so it's all just accepted and and comes in together and i think that's very dangerous it's the dogmatism that i talk about on here relatively frequently i am concerned about i mean i think it's it's been a problem the religious right in america is a malignant force i don't know it's very hard right now to tell what's actually going to happen with it um especially because yeah. like trump has just disappeared so i don't know uh, with yeah with yeah. trump gone it's um well with, with trump gone people are just dumping him like yesterday's news and just looking for the next you know daddy strong daddy to yeah. to like but the thing is the, the next strong daddy fascist. might be a fucking marjorie taylor green who is literally believes that jews fired lasers from space, space. yeah like i mean but seriously and <laughs> this is the concern like this is the it's really bad like and so like there is a certain degree but of see, like, yeah. but the thing is is that that conservatives don't agree with her because of that because of that narrative they they agree with her because people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and all these other republicans uh make everyone feel um like really bad to be like like oh like they're perse they they invoked such a persecution complex onto yeah. onto conserv onto like christian people or like other like con non progressive people right uh -huh. and and that that persecution complex they get a dose of that every sunday every sunday absolutely every sunday. oh 100 percent. like i mean that was the so i've talked about this before too like the war on christmas thing is very much a a a, a cornerstone of the religious right even into the even between cat between catholics and protestants it doesn't matter that's uniting because they need to feel like they're being per persecuted even when they're in charge but i mean this is where it's like if it, you know it depends on what your goal is for me um, I will never go, I will never live in one of these rural places ever again, like unless something really drastic changes because I, I realize that like me as an individual trying to like, your quality of life is just not the, the religious, religious yeah. Yeah. Gay marriage not, as not a political as, issue. Not. They and, view it as see, I, I just, they they just so what do we do? So what do we do? What are we going to just bus all the trans and gay people w. out of Indiana and all the other red states to the blue states? Like, well, what are we supposed to do? I, I, it is. T it's a tough question because I think that like um, a lot of people do that already. Like yeah. myself, a lot of trans people just find any way they possibly can to get money and go somewhere where it's safe for them. And uh, that is the really sad uh, state of our country. And this is why I do think it's actually ridiculously important that we pay attention to intersectional issues and that we fight these things. And it might even mean that we have to like... I don't know what's going to happen in the coming years. It's very possible that a lot of these people who got on the Trump cult are going to get scooped up by like traditional religious cults that also tie into like, you know, they bring in like the atheism or they, they bring in like the uh, QAnon and the Donald Trump stuff. We might have to go back and kind of learn some of these tactics from fucking American atheists who, who were able to make make strides against the overwhelming power of the religious right just because these churches are so goddamn good at uh yeah. at propagating horrible stuff but it is difficult because how do you make um how do you make uh 
a, a change to a space where every single person who doesn't match a very very specific type of demographic aka white cis uh straight openly you know um yeah and and how do you like everybody else is trying to flee that place how do you build a base of support how do you emancipate people from that without breaking the um the churches and i don't know that is a tough question for many individuals they just conclude it's not worth it and they go to where they can be safe because they only have one life to live and that is a huge problem for a lot of rural america is that like rural america um is being people are desperately trying to flee because if not you get your life is horrible and uh yeah so i don't know maybe it is possible um for places to start building i mean i do know this happens by the way like in west in you know i lived in west virginia for a while and i lived near oh wow you know i lived in a i lived in a um in in the college where? town in west virginia morgantown is where i lived in the past this was okay. many years ago um and there were pot like morgantown is like a, a local haven um for trans and and gay people like i mean they're fucking everywhere in morgantown because there's a university there and it's a tiny um like a tiny tiny um oasis where they all hide out and then they slowly raise money for each other and then leave the state um and but i do think it is possible for like like little oases like that to arrive and then people to band together and start making advocacy outwards and that can happen um you know like that can happen but it it's really got to be a st strategic analysis if you're in a rural area and you think it would be possible um for you to start making changes um you know that's great but there's a and that and there might be some really cool shit you can do um probably there might already be some people doing that there probably with your university there's probably gay you know what gsa is what they used to be i think they have a lot of them have rebranded to like lgbtq centers but like gsa was like gay straight alliance in the past um those sorts of organizations exist on most campuses and they do do good advocacy work and sometimes they're the only advocacy in the entire state and so there's a lot of solidarity to be found there the problem that i have with um like not like like trying to avoid intersectionality in these discussions is that like um is that like you it's really fucking hard to organize uh against like capital when the main thing that you need against capital is solidarity and you can't have solidarity because some of the people of your group w hate on a basic level other members of the or other potential members of the group it makes that damn fucking hard to build any sort of solidarity and solidarity is literally the core of lefty or even reform capitalistic reform you need to have solidarity you you have to have a workplace that damn near if not every single member ideally every single member but if not a vast majority of members of that workplace would need to be able to be together to do a strike or to unionize and if you can't have that it ain't gonna work you're not going to be able to get those goals and it and and the american labor movement is proof of that whilst there were some wins a lot of unions failed because they could not get they they could not uh overcome their own discrimination their own prejudice and it left them vulnerable and then they collapsed because capital was able to exploit that vulnerability better than they could so you see where uh, that's the problem yeah i i kind of see what you mean is that like if, if you going up against capitalism you got to have basically all of your all of your checks basically checked you got to have the gays yeah. like sorry but like yeah. like you got to have like um trans you know, people. like black em, people. like yeah trans people yeah. black people like immigrants like illegal you got to have ev i just i i just think that there's there has to be a way that like i well me i hope maybe you could you could maybe do like a easy like just 101 for like Conser people who are like conservative and like evangelical or protestant mm -hmm. whatever uh that are coming out of it and just like you know i don't know like i don't, see like you know being when you're when you're taught your whole life mm -hmm. that you know trans people are trans because uh they have like a mental deficiency or they're like mentally yeah. inadequate or um you know or you still don't you know you still don't even know are gay people born gay or did yeah. god make them or did they choose to, you know like there's yeah, so yeah. many like and so i guess that um re there's like not a lot of like resources for like people who are conservative and do kind of want to branch out i'm mm -hmm. sure maybe the chat is 
maybe saying people who who are but um there's like there's not there's not and so like when you're not when you don't know much about a subject you don't really care for it and then you, you try to move on to the next subject that everyone kind of has an interest in like i know in my workplace specifically like it's pretty even though it's a i live in one of the most progressive areas mm-hmm. in, uh in indiana it's still like you can't talk about like a lot of politics at work like you can't yeah. But and like the easy and like the easiest things to talk about aren't like gay issues and like black issues, even though I do talk, even though you know, those are things to talk about. Okay. It's about like it's like economic issues because that's something that you know, no matter what other like problems you're having, everyone's having money issues, yeah. And I, um, man, I, I had a really great conversation with you. I, I did not come prepared to talk about like anything Andrew Yang or math related. That's so fine. I'm so sorry about that. It's totally I, fine. Um, I mean, I think, um, I think that there might be room for a different type of rhetoric that basically frames, um, solidarity and, and as an economic issue, like, um, I think there's room for, if you're talking about politics and economy, to tie in and say like, yeah, well, that's why workers got to take care of each other, even if they're different, even if you, they're, your your coworker is a Democrat, you got to look out for them because at the end of the day, you know, it's us versus people who want to who want to exploit us, and uh, and you know that might be room where you can start planting those seeds of the concept of solidarity, of the concept of of class solidarity that that. It says no like I don't care if you're black or gay like we're on the same side of things um, like and and that might open people's mind to being able to rethink things also like there are a lot of people who aren't by who haven't bought in all the way and all they really need is like an argument that appeals to them to understand why they shouldn't hate gay people because I think there are a lot of conservatives who don't really want to do that um and who like but they just have never really met somebody or they think they've never met somebody who's gay or they fi- think they've met, never met somebody who's trans and so they kind of just assume the default position and they might just need a little bit of like a kick in the right direction and that can start opening their mind to other political issues because again it's very very hard to unite on economic issues when there's like a um like there's like a bunch of stuff a, a giant yeah. like shadow hanging over the conversation of oh yeah like it's cool that we can both fight for the paycheck but is this guy gonna lynch me like that's a really huge risk and like I, like most my most minorities are not going to take that risk because it makes sense obviously you know what i mean like you're yeah. not gonna you might be yeah sure it'd be great to get a regular paycheck but like I'm not going to risk it. I'm not going to risk like coalition building with somebody who might, you know, turn around the next day and vote for me to be kicked out of the workplace because of my skin color. Um, right. Or make it their own political agenda yeah. to be against you or whatever. Yeah. I, I, it's I, hard, I understand. Yeah. But it, it's definitely I, difficult. Like, I just think that like, I think we have to like, we do have to evolve our, um, our rhetoric, but I think we also have to take, um, like pretty strong aim at the, uh, propaganda machines of the right. Um, which mm. is hard to do, but we're kind of in a good place to do that. Um, Rush Limbaugh yeah, Fox ain't News doing so good. Being down yeah, that. well, but OAN and and uh, and Newsmax, Newsmax is up. Yeah, but I I, I think that like um, I've talked about this in the past. I haven't talked about this in a while, but um, in the past I used to talk about how like if you have a pipe that's spewing sewage all over the place, um, yeah, you probably shouldn't really like worry about cleaning the walls until you um, plug the pipe. Stop the gap. Yeah, you yeah. Gotta top stop radio that pipe. in the early two thousands for sure. That's exactly what that was. Just oh, garbage, yes. garbage, garbage, Endless. and all the people yeah. and. And I think, but see, most of that wasn't, maybe, maybe it was, maybe I just don't, maybe I'm a lot younger and don't really remember, but I I feel like most of that wasn't really against just like LGBT people just for the sake of it being LGBT. Definitely well, was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm thinking more like Sean Hannity in like 2006, 2000, like, oh, more like 2008 when Obama got, like, because once Obama got uh, elected, all of the, all of the, it all really came back full circle to like Islamophobia and like well, yeah. being like, like socialism and all that garbage. But no, you're, you're a hundred percent right that if, if we can't start um, mopping up until <laughs> we, uh, plug the the gap but yeah so but so like you say plug the gap but what does that mean we're gonna have to end all churches we're gonna have to make sure all churches are taxed 
Um, n n well, maybe. I mean, I think that, well, uh, God, this is hard. I mean, I, I, God, I it's right. definitely <laughs> something I'm thinking about because it's like, uh, I'm finding myself, I'm finding it becoming more and more relevant, um, for me to like go back 10 years to when I, when I was thinking a lot about like atheism, atheism and how to combat like extremist religion. Because if I'm honest, I believe we're dealing with an extremist religion even if it doesn't look like it like american republicanism is a national religion it is very much like it is it's a secularized religious movement that worships the american state and at this point and i don't the know the american way yeah the american way or whatever and and it's very uh it's very difficult to deal with um and that's a tough thing to that's a tough thing to struggle against. Like, it's not something that I think, I think it's taken a lot of people by surprise because I think there was this idea that like, oh yeah, like who, thank God, the like super crazy religious, like Westboro Baptist types are like on the way out. But now there's that, that exact same tactics are being used, but around Donald Trump and QAnon and around like American, um, like real Americanism and make America great again. Like this is the same movement. It's the same tactics, the same manipulation, the same constant Energy. repetition of, of, of dogma. Yeah. And yeah. so it is difficult. Um, I, I do think, um, that like when it comes to economic issues, one thing that is probably, that is, I would imagine would be very, very effective to talk about in rural um, conservative areas is, you know, you don't necessarily have to bring up um, socialism or communism or capitalism right, even at all. Oh my God, but, no, scare but, words. Yeah, scare words. But you can talk about, um, like, you could talk about uh, stuff like um, communities and and uh, mutual aid and communities working together and connecting with other communities to, t to protect themselves when the state has failed them, which it has. Um, and I think there's room to talk about that, to say, hey, like, look, like, the federal government never came and helped you when you were dealing with the opioid crisis. The federal government never came and helped you when you were dealing with COVID. We got to take care of ourselves. We got to work together and like do this where the federal government failed. And uh, that's, a, you know, you could talk about um, uniting with your community, but uniting with your community can also be a springboard to say, hey, but that means everybody in our community. I mean, you can't force out somebody just because you don't like the color of their skin. We got to stick together. We are all on the same team here. We all live in fucking rural Indiana, right? Yeah, we're Who all cares? fucked. Yeah, exactly. So, like, I think that message can be done, but it has to be done with the with the knowledge that um, that like. The people who need to be convinced are the people who are actively harboring like some level of racism in their in themselves, and you can't expect like rural black folks or rural trans folks to like 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 to like play nice in order to win those people over. Those I, people I, need I, to come I, to you and not the other way around. I, I know what you mean, yeah. but I I think that I think I, I would really like, like I do I do talk to a lot of people mm -hmm. way more than I probably should in churches and stuff. Oh maybe. Uh, yeah but like i i don't know i just feel like we these people would much rather would 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 sooner die than like you know accept gay culture or whatever just because of how how long right that garbage of information has been flowing down you, you know what i yeah. mean even i mean there's a Betty, the, the chance are, there's a very good chance that they will and uh and they might die as a result of their refusal to work with others and people like that you have to eventually just say nope and cut the cut the string because it's like i can't you can't uh, and i've said this you i don't know how much you watch of my content um if you've seen it before but i've said this many times before a lot of times a lot of people think that like oh like uh the republicans and the democrats are like struggling against each other and the republicans are holding back the democrats no the republicans are holding back the american like far right is holding back every other possible worldview imaginable it's like a stone wrapped around the neck of humanity not only is it holding back lefty ideologies it's even holding back other potential like other like slightly yeah, right-leaning ones moving it, its center exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. they, they want to bring they want to bring us back to like a, a religious monarchy like i'm serious like this is something that is very common to believe um and the and like anti-democracy is just rampant among these circles I, I, sorry i would argue that they don't want to they don't want a religious theocracy they probably they will never say that out loud but oh, they won't say it out loud no, yeah. is it's always the persecution complex is what is what draws in the but the they they will say they won't say that they want a religious monarch uh uh you know 
Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you, you know, a religious monarchy, but they will they will pop out and they will say, "Oh, I wouldn't vote for somebody if they're a Muslim. I wouldn't." And so at the end of the day, it's like, "Oh, so you're only going to vote for a Christian? You want to give the you when the Christians in power, you want to give that Christian as much po- as much power as possible. You want to ban Muslims from immigrating to the country. You basically do want a relig- you do you do want a religious monarchy. They just won't say it that way because that sounds bad and they know it sounds bad. Uh, it's this stupid dog whistling mask wearing bullshit that the right always does that drives me nuts because you can never have an honest conversation with fucking right wingers um but yeah uh, i know but unfortunately it's so uncommon and yeah it is it is sad and unfortunately like i do think like again i'm all about the bloomer fuel um as much as i possibly can but it is an unfortunate fact that like one of the reasons why like i personally fight so hard against indoctrination and do- and dogmatic worldviews and and highly zealous religious worldviews is because they are tragic they pull people in and it's incredibly difficult to get them out um some people never get out some people live their lives in agony under these churches believing that it's going to bring them salvation and they could even have religious beliefs that are more healthy but they don't because they're they're pulled into this highly manipulative structure and those things are really hard to deal with and that's kind of why we have to prevent them from having power however we can because i know that like i mean i watched my own the church the cult that i grew up in i watched them grow in power i watched them pull more people in um i watched them build a radio station and start putting out propaganda on the airwaves i watched them literally protest businesses out of town that they didn't want there like a porn shop opened up in one of the towns like totally innocuous just a porn shop and they literally blockaded it for days until the people closed it down because they were scared for their lives like this is the type of stuff that um like you have to stop it from ever getting there because once it once it has a foothold it is so toxic and it's so hard to get rid of and it is hard because sometimes you have to like it's the thing that like again like i don't have a family because of this stuff like i mean i do i have my own little family of choice but i don't have big christmases or 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 you know an uncles and aunts to talk to because i got disowned for being trans damn like fuck you know what i mean like yeah and uh, like what's sad to think about is like your your story is definitely like super sad but like how many more people that were in your exact situation kind of just said no i couldn't do it and you know kind of didn't live the way they wanted to yeah exactly a lot of fucking people and i talk that's a little bit of a different issue i talk about how like the numbers and percentages of gay people in our society and trans people in our society um is like way off because people don't people lie all the time is this the trans question is this yeah it really is there more yeah there's way more oh there's i i promise you i literally i would be willing to bet my life the statistics are so suppressed it is so painful to be trans in this society that many many people won't even think about whether they are even if they're even if they're demonstrating and i know this as somebody who literally i at one point detransitioned despite being the most trans fucking trans person that's ever trans in the world um like i i still thought that i wasn't valid and the pain was so great that it pushed me to say no it's not worth it i would burn up everything and of course at the end of the day it was worth it of course but the cost was fa- was unbelievable and and it is true like uh, there is a lot a lot lot of people um especially and this is especially true this is more true even than for trans people but uh for gay people there are most people like as far as we can actually find out like the kinsey scale exists for a reason most people are a little bit gay uh and that shows in his history as well um it's just that no it's much easier if you're like a little gay and you'd really kind of you know maybe you, there's this boy you'd really like to ask out um but you can't because uh you know you you know because it's like well fuck like my family will probably be mad at me whatever i'll just date a girl even though i really love that boy it's not worth the pain i'll just go try and find a girl like that's sad it's lost human potential it's lost uh it's stories that will never be written and it is unfortunately very common um so i think the numbers are different than people think they are um i think there's a lot of evidence of that in my personal experiences i know a lot of people who um are extremely closeted um and those people don't show up on statistics i know a lot of them know a sure whole lot of people who are super closeted and they don't ever show up on a statistic because they're not ever going to tell anybody even though it pains them so i don't know 
I I find yeah, it's it's tough. It is a really tough uh a really tough place we find ourselves in and I guess I just hope that we can educate enough people that as time goes on, these institutions, these religious institutions, these religious um, advocacy groups, um, um, that, you know, that they lose their power, that we're able to maneuver in such a way that we cut off their ability to keep recruiting. And uh, some people nah, will never I, be able to be that right. Yeah. As long as there are huge, like, homeschool, like, uh, places that publish – conservative republican dogma like a becca uh out of florida yeah like there's there's and like all the other millions of them like there's and they're the thing is is that their book sales have went up all these like the concert like it's called a becca it's out of pensacola florida they have a becca. some of the most yeah a becca hmm. um they have some of the most whitewashed conservative and i grew up using that textbook in a private school yeah and so like the, and their sales went absolute astronomically through the roof. I was talking to friends who work there, and they're during the pandemic, and they're like, "We can't, we can't keep up with all the people calling, all the demand and stuff." Yeah. So to think that, to think that it's just gonna, uh, to, we're just gonna hope and pray that we can educate in, in a in a smarter way. Oh no no no! That's... I don't believe we're gonna hope and pray. I mean, I am personally, I'm right here. You know, every single day, I'm fucking grinding for this shit, doing what I can do. I happen to have, you know, some communication skill and and the ability to make an entertaining show and teach people some stuff. That's what I'm aiming for. But like, I think there's many different ways to do this that I don't even know that aren't in my skill set. Uh, it is the grind for solidarity, as Navarak has said in the chat. Yeah, the grind for solidarity goes on. I don't think it's a matter of just hoping and praying we need to make our actions uh do that and uh you know well then i hope you do i hope you do set out like a couple of videos that'll just Absolutely. like really easy to bunks like really easy to bunks for things like oh like like if so if someone searches into youtube like are you know gay people born gay it's like yeah. quick like they're so because or like people just need better resources that are like well done and and uh and, and are like a really and I and I appreciate your uh your content and all all the stuff that you do. Mm. Uh, actually, I, I was originally a Destiny viewer. Uh, switched to Vosh after the Kenosha. And yeah. Then, Fair. And then I started watching Destiny again after that a little bit. Damn. I watched your guys' argument. I didn't really care for it. I thought Fair enough. Destiny was dumb and all that nonsense. <laughs> yeah. That's right. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad that we've we've managed to bring you over here to this Talk cozy little uh, hellish cavern of imps. So we're happy to have you for sure. Um, I mean, it's uh, I have a lot of plans for what I want to do in the future, and that's definitely something I want to do. In fact, I, I have a. I have a sort of back burner of, of topics where I want to do like uh, debunks. Um, yeah. They just they take a lot. Uh, they take a lot of yeah. effort and research. I've done a couple of them. I mean, I have my uh, uh, you know the topics that come up are are varied. Um, you know, I've done my one on the Proud Boys. Uh, I did my one on about Antifa that I think is like a, that debate with Rob Nor where I went in Antifa. That was like that was meant to be a um, a uh, like a primer. People can watch and mm -hmm. it's entertaining, and I get out all of the points that I wanted to. So I think it's a really good, uh, good intro. But I would like to do more, like some in the future, some sort of like bread to be type of vi videos that do this. The thing is, there are a lot of videos that exist. Um, unfortunately, one of the problems um, that happens is that it uh, you get siloed off. Um, I might make a video about, uh, you know, knowing things about like, about like, here's some facts about trans people or whatever. Here's some stuff so you don't have to worry so much, but nobody will ever see it. Um, it will well, be algorithmed it, off. Yeah. Do you, have you, uh, I mean, I'm sure, do you know who Phil Vischer is by any chance? Uh, no, I don't. The don't creator so. of VeggieTales? Have you ever oh, heard of VeggieTales? Uh, yeah, I know Veggie. of course I know VeggieTales. Yeah. I didn't realize that was his name, but yeah. Yeah, um, he actually does um, a lot of – well, not a lot. He's done a couple, like, really uh, – like, one really good one on, like, should Christians, like, vote – how should Christians vote. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would highly recommend, uh, like, if you're going to do uh, – if you're going to do anything to, like, talk about, like, like evangelical Christianity, like – please educate yourself a little bit because i know vosh is totally uneducated i know you're not vosh or whatever but like yeah, yeah. i it, i just cringe so hard anytime he talks about anything having to do with christianity or like 
have you uh, seen any like of my evangelicalism? stuff about, about Christianity? Uh, I don't know if you have. Like, you, you, like I've, I have a, a number of videos on this. I have a, a really old video um, that I probably need to do a, a, re, a, a once over on with my new camera and everything. But it's called the God Industry. Um, and then I yeah, always, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And then I also have one um, recently that's called the Cult We Grew Up In, and that was a conversation with Gay Fesh talking about specifically the cult that I grew up in, um, and some mm. of my problems with it but yeah i guess I, I i would love to do some more structured content on that um but yeah like as far as uh like if yeah, you want to hit so. man go for an just buy an abeka book and go through the go buy an abeka history book and you can yeah can you you'll have can you later will you dm me the the link to that website and we'll take a look that might be a really fun thing to do on stream and also might be very productive that, um that would yeah. I oh that would be really dope. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, can... I mean cuz I again like when with regard to uh knowledge about Christianity, uh I'm like pretty fucking informed. Like it's it's again, I was I took it I was literally planning on when I was younger, I was planning on becoming like a, a teacher, a religious teacher, um, because I would I've read the Bible through cover to cover like three times in my life in pure study. Like I've done a lot of this. I've even written like I have a, a whole folder of documents from like my m like more loud atheist uh, era where I wrote entire uh, essays about mm -hmm. um, this sort of stuff. I just haven't uh, I just haven't done it in years because I burnt out on it. It's so exhausting. Um but yeah, no, not a theologian. I was gonna, I was wanted to become like a, like a, like a pastor or whatever. Um, but that was pre-transition. Like a youth so. pastor. Yeah, like that. Well, I mean, that was the path in my church. Was like you started as a youth pastor and then you went from there. Um, and then I just it didn't sit well with me, and I slowly grew uh very um disenchanted with the church structure because I realized there was a lot of manipulation, and if you were the type that asked questions, you would not move up and and stuff like no. that uh you know the typical cult yeah, stuff I, I, um, yeah i learned but, that pretty early too yeah yeah it's uh, especially in the more extreme c churches that's absolutely true they will filter out anybody who has an actual genuine interest in questioning the texts um and then you are you know sort of slowly alienated and choked out because you're not supposed to you're supposed to take the teachings and repeat the teachings not question them and try to come to understanding that's not how these religions work um yeah, yeah. see I, you know. I, oh just uh sorry if i could just hit you Go ahead, maybe yeah, this sen sentence and then one other really quick topic sure, if i could sure absolutely yeah i i, I definitely agree I, i'm i consider myself a, a christian but mm -hmm. like in the most christ of senses or it's like I'm, I'm basically a humanist but you know you have christ as an example for a pretty decent person yeah, yeah. and i and I tried to like talk to people in my church about that, and it was like, ah, no, 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 not for you, buddy. And so, wait, yeah, you mean and, like not being church centric, like being like like more independent? Yeah, Jesus sent. Be, catch this, yeah, too. Like evangelicals telling them to be more Jesus centered than church centered. Yeah, yeah I got the, the resistance is surprising, even in the churches that are supposedly built on that as their premise. Yeah. Um, it, as it turns out, it's really inconvenient for, um, like centralizing money and, and funds and power to tell people to like think for themselves. And yeah, that's really tough. Um, it is hard. Uh, I do think there's like room for that sort of thing. I mean, that's what happened to me, but what ended up happening in my case was that like, as I studied the Bible more on my own, as I took my own notes, as I came to my own conclusions, I, I started to feel like, um, like the church was less and less necessary for my personal relationship for God. Yeah. And when I disagreed with like actions that they took, when I felt like they were being self enriching, um, it always felt like, uh, I mean, that was the moment that like really started to break me was like, I went, it was like, I had started to question my faith a little bit. And then I went back home with my, uh, well, I went to my dad's place and we went to this giant, calvary chapel which is the church i grew up in mega church and mm -hmm. uh i looked around and with the information that i'd gained from being in school for film i realized that there was millions of dollars of camera equipment being used to advertise like their like charity and i was just like wait a minute how is this how is this like 
like line up with like the idea that you're supposed to when you pray pray in the closet when you uh you know you, you should you should your work should speak for themselves you shouldn't need to self-aggrandize and yet you're spending millions of dollars just to make sure that you can broadcast your show in hd and and talk about how you're definitely gonna take the tithes and give them to i the got poor. one for you yeah i got one for you my college right they spent thousands and thousands of dollars to put palm trees on their campus yeah this place put brought fucking snow in to uh to fucking urban florida they put snow in so they could have a a a, a jesus christmas festival where you could snowboard and like it was just like yeah this is all for the glory of god it's like uh, oh my gosh yeah yeah or, or like, that was like uh, the black pill moment for for when i was like to to steal a little joke there my black pill my my black pill religion moment when i realized i wanted nothing more to do with the church was when i saw that and that actually really quickly started to get me out like that was where i started to fall out of christianity i had already had a lot of critiques of the church but i was still kind of like you know um generous towards the yeah like churches have their purpose and stuff like that but then when i saw right. that i was just like oh wait a minute this is all just a grift like this is all just so so selective and they they fixate on certain scriptures that allow them to grow their um to grow their pop you know their their uh, church population they they uh, you know then it becomes political and there's internal politics and they're buying schools and they're buying bookstores and, uh, yeah. yeah yeah it's fucked yeah so uh, yeah yeah uh, uh sorry to bring up any trauma no about that. no no, no. I'm, uh... I'm very comfortable talking about this stuff at this point in my life um oh, tremendous yeah. then yeah uh like certain there are certain things but usually uh usually i keep those things off stream so yeah things that bother me particularly bad um uh, but yeah not much uh, you harbor I... your demons huh what's Mama? that <laughs> you harbor your demons yeah well no i keep them, i keep them i keep them under control keep them under the, the 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 crack the crack of the whip, the <laughs> mental whip, so to say. Those demons. So yeah. I, I make the rules around here. Now, I mean, I will say that, like, I, I have – there have been times where I've pushed myself over the limit with that stuff. I mean, I watched a um, a a sermon by one of the pastors I learned under when I was younger, and that actually fucked me up. Like, I had to take, like, a break uh, for from, like, thinking about it for, like, a day because it actually fucked with me. It was very valuable to do nonetheless, and I would probably do it again. Um, but, like, I did – it blindsided me. So sometimes it does. Oh, but God. right now this isn't bothering me. Yeah. So. Well, that's – yeah, I, I felt the same way when I watched Coco because I really stopped thinking about the afterlife. And, oh, yeah. my God, that movie just fucks you up, dog. Like, I've heard really it's really badly. good, yeah. Have you, 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 seen you didn't see it? Not yet. No, oh, it's on my list. Wow, I have you, a huge – I have this giant wow. media list. Just, yeah. I, I, okay, you replied to me on Twitter once, so maybe it's worth just – Put it a little higher than whatever you have it on right now. Just bump it up one. Just all right, one. all right, I'll do that. Yeah, I have to make I have to make a master. I have I have like four different media lists. I need to just make a master media list. Uh, you know, I have been doing all this housekeeping. I should probably do that soon. I'll, I'll I'll definitely do that though. Yeah, I gotta see it. I've heard so much good stuff about it, but yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I guess last little meme, and I'll and I'll let you go. Please, because I I feel like I've taken a oh, lot. No, of your time. it's been a great conversation. Don't worry about it. Uh, thank you. I hope you'll invite me on again to talk. Of course. Awesome. Yeah. Well, one last meme for you. Sure. Why does demonmama.com go to conyer.gg? Hmm? It better not. It does. I swear to God, it does. Hold on a second. Let me test this. Nope. It doesn't on mine. Ah, I think I know what it is. Okay. You need to clear your cookies. You still there? Yes. Okay, yeah. You need to clear your cookies. I don't know why it is, but there is, for some reason, uh, I think Conyers' website cookie, ha uh, like, at one point in time, overrode mine. And if you haven't, re like, cleared your cache since then, I don't think it's cleared the cookie. Oh, wow. That's yeah. Sad. It's I really, there was really weird. I lore here about how you are connected through Conyer to Vosh, and there's a whole underground leftist system that people don't know about. Oh, no, I'm, I'm rather openly and directly connected to Vosh. I mean, Vermin, who you might know as Hyena, is, like, literally watching right now. So, like... <laughs> um but i met vosh in person and and uh like we live you know like in the same region of the world and uh yeah I'm, i don't really like there's no there's no secret underground connection i just i just i <laughs> i was an og og vosh chatter and uh i was kind of like wow streaming seems fun um 
but like i'm like living in this like shitty place and so when i moved i was like maybe i should try my hand at streaming and then uh i went to a meetup and i was like hey uh Vosh, what do you think should i try streaming and Vosh was like yeah you should try streaming and i was like all right i'm gonna try streaming then and then i did and here we are it turned out pretty well so yeah yeah I, I'm, I'm glad you i'm glad you do stream uh you're definitely one of my favorite streamers to listen to at night Damn, like when you. i'm playing switch or whatever yeah uh, it's it's so like i it's it's just really great because i do want to learn more about like you know trans gay issues and yeah. it's it's nice to hear that because you do talk about that a lot and it's and i and i respect and i understand that it's very important intersectionality Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, thank you very much. I, 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 those like Great really, really nice kind feedback. Um, I, I uh, would like to do more. Uh, honestly, like the flurry of the last few months with how much news has been coming out, I actually haven't talked about like trans and and gay issues as much as I'd like to. I've done a couple of little things, um, but it's just been so. There's been so much wild shit going on that i've been like kind of on the treadmill of like the trump thing and the, the fucking coup and then the the inauguration do you think that's ever gonna stop though you, yeah because there's always yeah, something sure. in the news man there's always something that's nah, gonna nah. be able to get clicks and grabs it, you think once it, you, you'll know once it dries up and then you can go to your kind of other content absolutely kind of i mean i think there's a certain amount of it that already kind of it well okay no i can't say that january's been insane um just totally yeah, off the wall um definitely. no i think it i think it will and i and the reason why i say that is because um like i i that that's been the case uh like at multiple points there have been I, like i've been streaming for almost like again almost a year now and i have watched the commute like the communities like like go through like droughts and gluts of content um and it will absolutely happen again also uh like i remember politics from before the trump era and uh there were giant dry spells where nobody had anything to talk about and it was like you had to dig down but don't worry i got a lot of stuff planned for that i have a whole document of stuff that i'm gonna do because when there's not news to cover there's a lot of other stuff to be learning uh history mama local politics we got some drama mama that might happen in the future we got all kinds of stuff but the the history one is one that i'm really looking at it's just those are the most work of any segment that i've ever done besides the the wall street one the wall street segment i did recently was like Holy yeah, your GameStop said. Oh, sorry. Oh no, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say I I watched it. I thought it was good. I think you put oh, a lot. You. I can tell you put a lot of time into that. I did. It was a it was a pretty concentrated like I, it was like four solid hours of reading and taking really deep notes. In addition to just like being aware of a lot of these things over the course of like years, you know, because like I've yeah I learned about investing a long time ago, and like I've taken you know a couple of like a number of e econ courses, and I also like. I used to do like a small amount of investing on the side. I did some crypto stuff way back in the day. Um, that crypto, like, like, like Bitcoin, not uh, cryptocurrency, not crypto Nazi, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, so, yeah. Which is what I get called a lot. For, oh, that's I'm, unfortunate. Um, yeah. You know, gang. It's yeah. Okay. Well, I, I don't think the, yang, I, I actually think I'm, I'm quite favorable to a lot of, I know a lot of like Yang gang folks. I don't think people, I don't think they're crypto Nazis. I think there are some big vulnerabilities in Yang's plot in a Yang's um, policies um, for UBI, but I don't think he's like a crypto Nazi or anything like that um, at all. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm really glad to hear you like the content. I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff. There will absolutely be periods where like there's no news and those periods are like, in my opinion, that's where, that's where the true skill of streamers are, is tested because it's real easy to like, it's not always easy. In fact, it can be pretty hard, but it's much easier to uh, do like news where you're like re-reporting or commentating on news. It's a lot harder to make content that is interesting when there's not like a giant spectacle happening. But I've weathered it in the past to get to this point, and I know that I'll be able to do it in the future. And in fact, in the future, I'll be I have even more resources than I did before. So I'll be able to, you know, put some really cool stuff up there. But yeah. Um, I don't know. This year, though, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to see. 2021 is setting up to be quite the wild year. I don't know what's going to happen this year. So we'll see. Maybe this year will be lots of news. But we'll see. But we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 
I yeah, definitely. Like after watching you for, I, I've been watching you for about like maybe four, maybe five months. Oh damn! Well, lo- damn, long time viewer. Well, happy, very happy to have you, and thanks for watching for as long as you have. I, I uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed the slow and steady, slow but steady increase in quality. <laughs> yeah, I. <laughs> I I always liked the little song in the beginning though. I've always thought that was that's uh, that jingle got me right away. That dun da 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 dun. Yeah, I've been playing the remix a lot. I'm gonna go to um I'm gonna be building like over time. This is a project I am working on. Again, I have like twenty things on the back burner. <laughs> um I am going to be uh doing a cycle of songs in the beginning. So you'll hear the original version of the theme, the remix. There's gonna be the new one that's coming out when I hit five K that Gay Fesh is doing. Um nice. and you know, if we get other ones we'll put more uh i've also been looking into um i've been oh god i don't know if it's going to be able to happen but i've been really looking into maybe licensing a couple of key songs um then just like going and sending emails to artists and being like hey can i have you know can i buy a license to play your song on my stream because i'd really love to um and that would be really cool but we'll have to see so (laughs) yeah hit the local bands up see yeah (laughs) exactly there's a ton of them yeah so um yeah um cool well hey is, any other memes you wanted to hit me with before you go um we do some boogie no, coverage uh, after this uh no I, i'll be i'll watch i'll be watching the stream though and I'll, I'll be back I'll, I'll have a little document for next time so we can talk hey no problem um yeah anytime you want to talk about something just just hit me up and i'll try to make it happen if i can i can't always i can't make promises because you know people want to talk about stuff but i'll do my yeah, best because this was a real good conversation i really enjoyed uh talking with you nick Wow, thank you so much to you, Mom. I appreciate it. Have a good rest of your night. Uh, yeah. Enjoy the rest of your stream. Absolutely. Make good content. Yeah, thank you so much. And have a wonderful night yourself. Bye for you now. You too. Bye. What a pleasant... Wow, today today was the day of fucking based-ass conversations. What the hell?